these men are robbing a grave. Not for the material possessions of the person, like gold or silver. No, they won't take any of that. In fact, they will strip the body completely naked so they don't take any of the material. Instead, they want the body itself. In the 18th and 19th century, thousands of bodies were taken from their graves in the United Kingdom in the pursuit of profit and medicine. A thank you for Dr. Julia Best Frank of Yale University for her amazing paper on this topic. Why was robbing graves so profitable? And why were medical students driven to such extremes to acquire bodies? We have to go back farther than the 18th century to answer these questions. In ancient times, the dissection of human cadavers was commonplace and a central tenet of anatomy. Yet after the fall of Rome and the rise of the Christian church, human dissection was forbidden. In England, a special grant was issued by Henry VIII in 1541 to allow the Royal Company of Barbers and Surgeons the right to dissect four executed felons a year. Outside of these executed felons, the English common law allowed medical students and anatomists the ability to dissect convicted murderers. But as the number of medical students grew and private hospitals started opening, the demand for human bodies quickly outpaced the supply. What made the situation even more interesting is stealing from the person, such as a shroud or their coffin, was a felony. But the person did not own his body. Therefore, stealing a person's body did not constitute a crime. It was under these circumstances that body snatching and grave robbing reached its peak in the late 18th century. The first body snatchers were the medical students and surgeon themselves who stole bodies in the middle of the night for their anatomy courses. But, as usually happens, a profession called the Resurrectionists sprung from the demand for bodies. These were gangs who traded in human bodies, not drugs or alcohol. An infamous gang known as the London Borough Gang supplied some of the most prestigious schools, hospitals, and universities with their cadavers. This gang was so entwined with famous doctors of the day that on numerous occasions, Sir Astley Cooper, a great surgeon, bailed them out of jail. By day, the London Borough Gang would stock the graveyard looking for funerals. They would then attend the funeral to ensure the family hadn't booby-trapped the coffin, which, as ridiculous as it sounds, was a real concern, as one gang member was injured when a father placed gunpowder in the casket of his son, which exploded when they opened the casket. Then, at night, two members of the London Borough Gang would come and carefully exhume the grave and then place back all the dirt so no one was the wiser. As the body snatchers grew in number, the public outcry against them grew and people began guarding their dead relatives' graves. They would camp out at night on top of the grave for two to three weeks after the funeral to ensure the body had decomposed enough to be useless for the surgeons. One brazen group of body snatchers went so far to challenge the family sitting atop their relatives' graves. A newspaper from Ireland tells the tale. Persons were appointed to remain in the churchyard all night to protect the corpse from the sack em up gentlemen. About ten minutes after two o'clock, three or four of them were observed standing on the wall of the churchyard, while several others were endeavoring to get on it also. The party in the churchyard warned them off, and were replied to by a discharge from their firearms. This brought on a general engagement. Now in this case, the family and townspeople were able to drive off the body snatchers, but it shows to what lengths these gangs of men would go to get their score. An even more infamous example occurred in Edinburgh in 1828. William Burke and William Hare were two Irishmen who took the next logical step to the cadaver shortage and started creating their own supply. Hare owned a flop house and enlisted Burke to help him carry a body of another tenant to the university. After they got paid, Burke and Hare started to turn this into a business. They were systematically inviting people back to the flop house to get them extremely drunk, and then smother them with a pillow once they were sound asleep. They would cart the body off to the highest bidder, with some surgeons remarking on the freshness of the cadavers. They were eventually caught, but not before killing 16 people to turn them into cadavers. Hare eventually turned on Burke and offered a full confession. 
Ironically, Burke was executed and himself dissected by the waiting medical students. The public resentment of the body snatchers and the entire medical profession grew until it hit a boiling point in 1832. At this point, the public started going after the dissectors and surgeons themselves, with many of these doctors being tried and convicted for receiving and dissecting stolen bodies. Eventually, the issue was brought to Parliament, who recognized the medical profession's need for bodies to create good surgeons, and decided to allow dissection of any body if they were unclaimed after death. They also outlawed the dissection of convicted murderers. People could also donate the bodies of their kin to further the medical profession, thus effectively ending the clandestine profession of the body snatchers. Thank you everyone who's subscribed to my channel so far. I'm really having a lot of fun making these videos. So if you like this video, please you know consider liking it and subscribing it. And more importantly, if you have any ideas for video topics, please comment them in the comment section below. Thank you.